Hello, all my creative friends. You're going to love this book called Papa's Mechanical Fish by Candace Fleming, read by Miss Jill. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and thumbs up the video. It's the best way to support my channel. This is my Papa, and this is his backyard workshop where he spends his day thinking, tinkering, and inventing things. Hear that? Clickety clankety bang. Thump whirr. That's the sound of Papa at work. Sometimes Papa tries inventing helpful things like collapsible coat hangers that are easy to store. Sometimes he tries inventing unusual things like edible socks. Yuck. And sometimes he tries inventing playful things that just only just don't work, like steam-powered roller skates. He forgot to put the brakes on. But not once has Papa invented anything that works perfectly. I will someday, Papa tells me. All I need is a fantastic idea. But fantastic ideas are not easy to come by. So Papa twiddles his tools and pulls his hair. He racks his brain, sighs, and stares until one day he throws down his screwdriver. Enough thinking, he cries. Who wants to go fishing? I do, I holler. Me too, says my brother Cyril. Don't forget me, adds our sister Mary. My dada, squeals baby Wilhelmina. Woof, barks our bulldog Rex. I'm so glad. I brought along these poles, says Mama. We all troop out to the lighthouse pier and drop our lines into Lake Michigan. Papa, I say as we wait for a bite. Have you ever wondered what it's like to be a fish? A fish, he mutters. A fish? Uh-oh, squeals baby. Papa's pole clatters to the pier. He leaps to his feet. He whirls me around. Verena, you're brilliant, he hoops. Then he's gone, racing back over the sand dunes to his workshop. Clickety, clankety, bang, thump, whirr. Ta-da, cries Papa a few weeks later. He opens his workshop doors to reveal. What is it? I ask. It's an underwater vessel, he explains. A mechanical fish. I will dive like a salmon. I will glide like a trout. Papa's mechanical fish is so small he barely fits inside. It has a tube sticking out of the top so he can breathe. It has a pole sticking out of the bottom so that he can push himself along the lake floor. I will call it whitefish, he says. But will it work? We keep our fingers crossed. Goodbye, Papa! We wave. Farewell, family! He waves back. Then Whitefish is launched. But... Papa swims back to the pier. Mm, it almost worked, he said. Almost, I agree. I think for a minute, then ask, Papa, how do fish move through the water? With their tails, says Cyril. With their fins, adds Mary. Fishy go, squeals Baby. Woof, barks Rex. I'm so glad I brought along this towel, says Mama. She wraps it around Papa's shoulders. But he is too deep in thought to notice. And... Clickety, clackety, bang, thump, whirr. It is big enough for two people to sit in and it has a wooden fin on top and a wooden propeller in the back. Papa pedals it like a bicycle to make it go. Goodbye, Papa, we wave. Farewell, family, he waves back. Then the whitefish, too, is launched. It dives below the surface. Swoosh. But... Crack, drip, splinter, rip. Papa bobs to the surface. 
It almost worked. He hollers to us. Almost. I holler back. I think again and then ask, Papa, how do you fish stay dry? With special skin? Asked Cyril. With scales? Asked Mary. No, pee pee! Squeals the baby. Woof! Barks Rex. I'm so glad I brought along this life preserver, Mama says. She tosses it to Papa, but he is too deep in thought to notice. And clickety clankety bang, thump, word. Behold! Whitefish three! It is big enough for three people to sit in. It has a plunger to make it go up and down. It has a steering wheel to make it go left and right. It has levers instead of pedals. And it is covered in waterproof copper. Goodbye, Papa! We wave. Farewell, family! He waves back. Then the Whitefish 3 is launched. Splosh! It dives. Swoosh! It chugs beneath the waves. But... Papa clings to a buoy. Uh, it almost worked, he says minutes later as we pull him into the rowboat. Almost, I say. I think more and more, then ask, Papa, how do fish know where they're going? Can they see underwater? Says Cyril. Do they have good eyes? Adds Mary. <laughs> Peekaboo! Squeals the baby. Woof! Barks Rex. I'm so glad I brought along these oars, says Mama. She rows towards shore, but Papa is too deep in thought to notice. Now he barricades himself inside his workshop. Clickety clinkety bang thump whirr. He does not come out. Thunk clunk whack. We cannot go in. He even covers the window so we can't peek. zip a -boom. What's the big secret? I ask. Wait and see, Papa says. Just wait and see. Clink, clackety, bang, thump, whirr. At last, he flings wide the workshop doors. Surprise! <laughs> we gasp. The white fish four is big enough for seven people to sit in. It has air cooling system, an air compression system, and an air purifying system. It has a steam boiler to run the engine and a battery to run the headlights. It has velvet carpeting and comfortable chairs. Along its length are dozens of portals. Papa grins. Who wants to go for a ride? I do! I whoop. Me too, says Cyril. And don't forget me, adds Mary. Mm, go bye-bye, squeals the baby. Woof, barks Rex. I'm so glad I brought along a lunch, says Mama. One by one, we drop down through the hatch. Then Papa seals it behind us, takes his place at the controls, and sploosh. Woof. Hours later, we rise to the surface. We glide to the beach. We spread out a blanket and feast on ham sandwiches. Papa, I say between mouthfuls, mm, that idea was absolutely, positively fantastic. Mm, brilliant, says Cyril. Clever, says Mary. Yeah, squeals the baby. Woof, barks Rex. I'm so glad you brought me along, says Mama. She gives Papa a big, big smooch. Then a seagull flies overhead. I toss at my bread crust. Hmm, have you ever wondered what it's like to be a bird? I ask. Hmm, a bird, Papa mutters. A bird? Uh-oh, 
squeals Baby. The end. Hey guys, real quick. While the story is fiction, it's based on true events. In the summer of 1851, an eccentric inventor named Laudner Phillips really did take his wife and children for an afternoon excursion beneath the waves of Lake Michigan. No one knows why Phillips became so obsessed with building a submarine, but for years he worked on making his dream come true. Feel free to pause the video and read more about the story.